Here are the tools that we're going to be using for this project. Some metal clay of your choice, I'm using art clay silver, and some corresponding silver paste. Now, you can see I'm using the same brand here. If you don't have paste, simply tear a very small bit of the lump clay off and add water until it becomes a thick yogurt consistency. Working from this side to that side, I've got a brass brush, um, and that is to clean the fire scale off my fired pendant. Now I'm gonna be firing my pendant in a kiln, but you can use uh, a torch or a gas hob, whatever you like. It will work in all of the ways. Moving in slightly, I've got a green um, mat that I always use for my projects. It's just really to keep the table safe, but it, you don't really need to have that because I'm also gonna be working on some Teflon squares. This is great for transporting the metal clay pieces to and from your drying space, um, just so that it, it keeps them nice and flat and clean and free from anything else. I'm actually using here some polymer clay. Now, if you're not familiar with polymer clay, you can get it in any hobby store. Uh, or craft store and it's a bit like um, plasticine except a little bit harder you have to warm it in your hands before you use it now I used this to determine the size of the circles that I wanted before I opened my silver clay because I wanted to make sure that I had the right dimensions really handy if you want to do that and you can see that I've even this does fire in a normal domestic oven and becomes rigid, which is what I've done with this bit because I wanted to use that as a template. Again, you don't need to do this. This is just a suggestion. Here you've got some um, sanding grits. If you haven't got a sanding grit, you can use a nail file, preferably one that's rougher on one side and smoother on the other. Coming across then, we've got a spritz bottle of water. That's just normal tap water. I've also got something here called Cool Slip. This is my go-to lubricant and it stops the metal clay from sticking to things. I'm gonna be using textures that are just wallpapers that I picked up for free in a local DIY store, but I'm gonna spray them with the Cool Slip first to make sure that my clay doesn't stick to that. I've got a needle tool here, which is great for cutting things out. I've got a roller. I've got a couple of paint brushes. You can never have too many little mini paint brushes. Um, I use them for wet and dry and when we're joining things. I will probably use more than two here, but I've just got two here just to show you. You, you actually could get away with just one, but it is handy to have two because then you've got one for wet and one for dry. Somewhere to store your metal clay when you're not using it. Here, I've got a rigid, cutter. Now this is not really bendy and the great thing with this is it gives me lovely straight cuts. Anything that will, you can use that will cut straight you can use instead of that if you don't have one of those. And lastly here I've got my spacer bars. Now if you don't have spacer bars you can use playing cards. The white ones are one millimeter and that means you would have four playing cards on either side. And then the other ones that I'm using are the 0.75 millimeters, which is three playing cards on either side. Okay, so we've got all our tools together. If I use anything else later on, I will add it in the description below. I thought it might be useful in this video to show you how I plan my projects in metal clay because once you've opened the metal clay it can go dry especially if you're working in a warm environment and you want your clay to be at its best so a bit of planning actually is really quite helpful. Now you can see here that I've got a plan and I've cut out shapes for my pendant and I'm using polymer clay. It's a bit like plasticine that kid is use but you can buy this very cheaply just just a block from your um, local craft shop. Now also what I found is that the dimensions that I wanted for the ring to the half moon were actually quite specific. I hadn't realised that until I was cutting out different shapes. 
but I've realised that the cutter that I'm going to use for the half moon is actually substantially bigger than the cutters for the circle there. You can use anything to cut your metal clay. You can use um, you can use mugs, you can use jars, you can use anything that you've got in the house that's circular. The only thing that it must be is make sure that it's clean. So this was my original design. Um, what my plan was, was to put a hidden bale here, just behind here in a half horseshoe shape. And it was gonna go under there and wouldn't be seen. And I could thread a chain through. But because this is so small, and if I made it any bigger, I didn't think it would look right with the pendant. Making a horseshoe shape and attaching it to the back, and then once fire, don't forget it shrinks 10% about, you would have find it very difficult to put a chain through this horseshoe, the end bits. Um, the actual chain itself probably wouldn't be a problem, but it's the end bits. Now, if you make your own chains, that's not an issue for you. So I thought, okay, well, I'm not keen on that because I don't want to make a pendant and then find I can't put a chain through it. So I made another type of bale. Let me show you. And this one was going to work in a slightly different way. So what I was going to do was I was going to, let's flip it up. Oh, hang on. This is all very squidgy. So let's try this again. Okay. So I was going to put the bale like that and make sure that it wasn't seen. This is, of course, just a practice. But actually, I didn't particularly like that because, I don't know if, if I pick this up, this is probably all going to go flying. But from the side, you can see it's quite intrusive. Now, I would have got a nice uh, chain through that, but I just didn't particularly like it. So I was just playing around with some shapes. And what I decided to do, let's lift that up into the right place. By the way, this circle here can go anywhere that you like. It can go down there, just it can go further up, it can go halfway, it can go any, any place that you want, so long as it's centered between these two points. I decided to make this. And what this does is it gives me, ooh, let's see if I can get this in the center. It's still very sticky, there we are. That gives me a larger surface area at the back of the pendant to attach a horseshoe bail, which will now be much bigger and will have a bigger space. It won't protrude out for too far, but it will just give us that bit more room to work and it won't be seen. So that was that part of the planning and I'd got my design sorted out. I knew I was gonna to have to have a, a horseshoe bell on the back. Then I decided that this bit was gonna be textured, but the other two bits weren't. So I got out some textures and played around with them on the polymer clay until I found two that I like. Now I'm going for an industrial look. So I really like this one. This one's gonna be on the front and then this one here is going to be on the back. So I'm all set now. I know what I've got to get out of my um, metal clay and it's all ready to start cutting and shaping. Okay, we're ready to start our project now. And I've got a big, big, big hunk of clay here. And the reason I've got a big hunk of clay is because we're going to be cutting out this half circle first of all. Now it's easier to roll out a full circle and then cut it in half. You get better dimensions, but um, this is quite a large pendant. You don't have to do that. If you've got less clay, then by all means use a smaller amount of clay and just cut out a half circle. So what I've got here is a Teflon mat so I can move my um, piece around. And I've got one millimeter spacer bars on either side. And what I want to do is, actually let's just roll the clay in the palms of my hands just so that I get a nice ball. 
And then I want to roll this out so that it becomes almost a circle shape. And don't worry too much if it's not a perfect circle. And because we're using four playing cards here, it will, oops, let's just make sure that's on there. This will get bigger once we texturize. So I'm just going to look. Now already I'm almost there at being able to cut out a full circle. But I need to texturize first of all. So I've got two pieces of wallpaper and I've already used some cool slip on them and that will stop the clay from sticking. So I'm going to lift my clay up and I'm going to put it on what's going to be the bottom. And then I need to swap my one millimetres and I need to bring in 0.75 millimetres. And then I need my top um, wallpaper. And what I'm going to do is roll very firmly across the clay once. Now when I lift that up, I've got imprints on either side. I'm not too bothered about this bit not having an imprint on it because we are actually going to be cutting some of this out, as I said. So I'm going to lift it up and put it on my mat. And now I'm going to use my circle cutter. I'm going to find the nicest bit which is probably there actually, because I'm going to cut out this bit that I don't like at the bottom. I'm just going to be quite firm with it. And I've got almost a circle. You can see just at the top here, I haven't managed to get it, but that's fine because I'm going to cut that bit out anyway. So I'm just going to lift up the excess clay, roll it in my hand, and just put it somewhere safe so that I can use it for the other bits of the design. Now, this is where you need a tissue blade, one that isn't bendy. You can buy ones that are bendy like this, but you're not gonna get a straight line with that. So you want something that, be, that will cut in a fairly straight line. And you can do this by eye, which is what I'm just about to do or you can measure it, or you can go with the lines that are on my work surface, as you can see just below, the green work surface has got lines on it. But actually, I'm fairly happy with that. And I'm going to remove my excess clay. And there's the back, you can see the back design on it. And I'm going to scrunch it up and put it somewhere to keep. So we're now going to cut out our circle for the next part of the pendant and I've got my circle cutters ready and my one millimeter spacer bars again. So I'm just going to roll out. Oops, come on Clay, there we are. This is a new roller and I think the clay sticking to it much more than my old roller. I might move back to my old roller for the next demonstration. Anyway, here we go. So I'm going to cut out the larger circle first. Just going to wiggle the cutter upwards a bit and then position the smaller one in the centre. Now you've really got to do this by eye and make sure you don't press down until you feel that you're exactly in the right place. You may have to do this a couple of times just to get it centered correctly. That's not too bad actually, so I'm gonna run with that one. So then you need to remove the excess clay and actually removing the center first would have been a far better idea 
because then what happens is you have less distortion. But let's see if I can just pick the clay up without distorting the circle. Now sometimes you can do this and it picks up and comes out in one. And today, because I'm filming, it's not doing that. There we are, now it's coming, now it's playing. Okay, so I've got my nice clay there that I'm going to just squidge up and put away so I can use later. And there I've got my circle, which is going to form the second part of the pendant. So that is now going to go into the dehydrator. So this is our second to last piece of the pendant and we're going to make the diamond shape. So I've got my spacers here again and I'm just going to roll my clay out so that I get a nice elongated piece. And then I'm going to very gently lay my template on the top. Now that is a piece of polymer clay that I've fired in the oven, just a normal oven, and it's now hard so I can cut around it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's my template. You don't have to do this. You could cut a piece of metal clay by eye. It's not a problem. However you find or what's easiest for you. I'm just going to move those out of the way. And there we are. Just going in at a slight angle. Now you are going to be refining this later on by uh, sanding it. So there may be bits that don't look completely straight, but that's fine. Oops, that's fine. You can sort that out later. So there we are. And hopefully, the polymer clay, if I just touch the top of that, being careful not to touch the metal clay. There we are. And there's my diamond shape. So I'm going to put that into the dehydrator as well. And then all we have to do is make the bale. The last bit we're going to make is the bale. And I've rolled out some clay using my four playing cards or one millimeter uh, thick spacers. And we're going to make a horseshoe shape. And I've got a McDonald's straw that I've cut down. Of course, you can use any straws you want but I find that they're quite nice and long um, and wide so that not only can you get the um, chain through, but you can also get the bell through. Now by eye, I'm going to make just a strip of clay and then I'm going to cut it down in size, top and bottom. Now you can always trim this, so don't worry if you have made it too long. I'm just going to save my clay, so I'm going to put it away. And then what I'm going to do is, because I'm going to put it over the um, straw, I want it to be fairly malleable, so I'm just going to spray it with some water. Just a quick spritz, just so that it's, I'm going to be able to move it around. The other thing to mention is you want to make sure that it's not too thick. It's not, it's not um, thicker than your diamond shape because it's going to go behind that. If it is, you can always sand it down later, so that's not a problem. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place my straw here and I'm going to lift very gently my clay. If it will come up. Yay, there we are. And I'm going to drape it over the straw. Now I'm going to lift the straw a bit and we've definitely got some excess here so I'm just going to cut away 
the excess because we don't need big long feet on this. But what we do want is for it to touch on both sides. So I'm just going to oh, let's get that straight. So I'm just going to nibble off the edges and then pick that up and just press that round the straw. And what you'll see is, I mean, those edges are not straight at each end, but you'll just sand those down later. So there's our bale. And um, whilst the clay is in this state, it still has some memory, so it can spring out. So you may have to do this a couple of times just until it holds. Okay, so I'm going to put that in the dehydrator too, and then we'll come back and we'll assemble everything. Here are my pieces now, and they're fully dry. Um, to dry, if you don't have a dehydrator, you can always put them in a domestic oven at no more than 100 degrees for at least half an hour, um, the longer the better really, or on a warm radiator, anywhere that's warm. If you're worried that the pieces aren't fully dry, the way to test is to get just a normal hand mirror, a compact mirror, pick the piece up, put it on the mirror, for a couple of seconds, if you remove the piece and you can see condensation on the mirror, that means they're not dry enough to work with. So you just put them back to dry for a bit longer. But I know these pieces are dry, so I'm now going to refine them and sand them. Before I do that though, I want to just check that the dimensions of the pendant are what I want because now is the time when all the pieces are dry and I'm not messing around with them to see if they all fit together nicely because I might need to do a bit more sanding in some areas than others. So let me just have a look. So that's pretty much as I want it. So I'm happy with that. But then there's one more dimension that I've got to check and it's with, let's just take that off there. It's with the bail on the back. Now, as you can see here, it overlaps, I'll see if I can pick it up for the camera. The bail is wider than the actual uh, diamond. So that would show at the front. So I know that I'm gonna have to sand the corners and potentially even the sides of the bail to make that more invisible. So that gives me a plan for sanding. So for sanding, I'm going to use some sanding grits. And here's one that I've already started to use. And they come in different um, gauges. If you don't have those, you could use a normal emery board or nail file, but it must be one that has a soft and a harder side because you want to get some good refinement. If you are going to use an emery board, the one thing that I would say to get also is just some normal baby wipes. Baby wipes are fantastic at just gently wiping over edges to give a nice, clean, smooth finish. Don't overwork with them because it's wet and you're adding moisture back in. But they are absolutely great if you need tools that are cheap and you don't have them to hand. And here are some needle files. I'm going to use those as well and they are going to be fantastic for getting into small places. Now, you can buy those, where you buy your metal clay, you can probably buy needle files like this. Um, with the sanding sponges, you can actually cut a tiny bit off. So for example, if you want to get in the center of the circle, you can cut a tiny bit off, or again, with the baby wipes, just chop a small bit off so that you're not dealing with too much and putting stress on the metal clay. Now, to sand, you want to keep all of the bits that come off. And I've already done a little bit of sanding and you can see there's some bits there that I can reclaim. Now I bought this from Cool Tools in America and I do all my sanding over it and it's got, if I can pull this off, it's got a little stopper here at the end. Don't want to tilt this too much. And so when you finish sanding, you literally just brush all the bits down into the stopper. You can see some bits have fallen off there, but 
down into the stopper and then you put that into your paste bottle so that you can reclaim and it will become paste later on. So I'm going to do some sanding. Um, I'll come back and show you how I nibble the edges off this and how I sand this after I've sanded all the other pieces. I've sanded all the major parts now and now it's to the bale and I'm going to just put my sanding pad here. I'm just going to hold the piece firmly and just rub backwards and forwards or in a circular motion because what that will do is it will just sand the feet a little bit so I've got a straight edge. Now when I've done that, I know that I need to make this slightly slimmer, not too much because I'm just going to nibble the edges, but I'm going to lay my bale on the side now and do the same process. And when I've done that, and I've got it to a width that I want, I will then pick up my sanding pad, I don't know, I hope you can see that, and just nibble the corners away by rubbing on the sanding pad. And this is going to take quite some time, so I'm gonna do it off camera, but always keep checking to make sure that it's hidden behind your diamond. So I'll come back when I've refined this properly. Okay, so I have now sanded the bell and I've taken the edges down slightly and also tapered both of the feet. Now a good trick is if you're not sure when you've got something that's really quite tight here, you want to check is if you zoom in, you can actually see if you need to make adjustments. Now you can see that the bottom corner here is, I mean, if, if I edge it over, it won't be sitting, it won't be showing. But I think what I'd rather do is just nibble a bit off the foot and then that will be ready to go. I'm going to assemble the pendant in a couple of stages. The first thing that I'm going to do is add the uh, circle to the pendant here. So I need to just wet a little bit there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spray some water on my board. That may be out of shot, you may not be able to see it, but all I'm doing is just dipping my brush into the water and then I'm just going to wet the pendant almost where I think the bale is going to go. Not the bale, sorry, second part of the pendant. Whoops. You don't need to flood it, but you just need to give it a bit of tackiness. That's about right. Then I'm going to use another brush. And on the back, I'm just going to check which is the back and which is the front. Yeah, that's the back. I'm going to take another paintbrush, dip it in to my paste and just go around the edges. Now I know that I'm going to take it to about halfway. Don't put too much because if you put too much, it will all squidge out the sides. But I've got some there, so now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to lay it down whoops, on the pendant. Now that's not in the right place, so actually that's about right. So what I want to do now is just hold it and give it a tiny wiggle and that will just encourage the contact points. You can sometimes feel when it bites because it just stops wiggling and just stays, stays still. With a dry paintbrush, you then want to go around the edges and just remove any excess. At this point you can also oops, pick it up and just make sure you've got no excess on the back which I haven't so that's great so I would now put that in the dehydrator 
um, or you would put it in your domestic oven to dry before we attach the diamond. It's now time to attach the diamond to the top of the circle. Now this time I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to put paste on the top of the circle and just wet my diamond. Now that's just because it's going to be easier to apply. So I'm just going to put a small bit of paste here. It's got to be enough really that it will grab the diamond but you don't want to put too much so that it all squidges out over the side. Again, with my wet brush, I'm just going to wet part of the diamond and then I'm going to flip it over. And with shaky hands, I'm going to attach it. Now I want to make sure at this point that it's exactly where I want it. And I, want, I know that I want to line those points up with the, set with the top of the circle. So this will take a bit of fiddling around, but make sure that you get it right. And then you need to put it in the dehydrator to dry again or on your radiator to dry again before moving on to the next, the next section. So we're now ready to attach the bale. Um, all of the pendant is dry and firmly attached. So we want to turn it over because we're going to be working on the back. Lay it down gently. And normally I've got some lovely tweezers, um, really nice fine point, but I've lost them. I can't find them at all. So I'm going to use these chunky ones, which are not really great, but uh, hopefully they'll do the trick. So let me move the paste out of the way. So I want my bale, let's just fiddle it about there. So that's where I want my bale to go. And it will be hidden from the, um, from the front. So what I'm going to do this time, I know where I need to put some paste. So I'm just gonna move that to the side and then with my paste brush, I'm going to paste the two areas where the bale's going to attach. Now, don't worry too much if you get a bit too much on here because you can always take it off, but it's best to try and do it as cleanly as possible. Now, I'm just going to spray some water here, being careful to shield um, the pendant from the water. I'm going to pick up, let's see, I'm going to pick up in the tweezers and just dunk. I don't know if that, could, yes, you can see that on camera. I'm just going to dunk the edges in some water. And that just moistens them. And then I'm going to carefully place the bale making sure that the edges, I might just use the back of the paintbrush, I think, just for a minute. Just gonna edge it gently into place. And then apply just a tiny bit of pressure. So that the pieces stick together. Now I'm going to dry that and then when it's dry I'll come back and I'll do I'll put a bit more paste on just to reinforce. After that I'll do any final sanding that's required and then I'll fire it and I will fire it face down like this. Um, the reason for firing it face down is because of the bale you don't want it to be sloping otherwise the uh, pendant could warp in the firing process. So I'll come back after I've fired it. So here's the finished pendant straight from the kiln. And one thing that I forgot to mention is no matter how you're firing, it's good if you have some firing blanket. You can get 
these in craft stores, etc. But if you have a bale like this, it's just good to put the fire blanket in the middle. So you can do this if you torch fire. And all this does is this just, I'll just try and grab this away, there we are. It just keeps the hole nice and open. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire brush this to bring up the silver and then I'll come back and show you. I may even put it in the tumbler. And then there's one other thing that I wanted to show you. Do you remember that I was talking about my new favorite toy, which was the catcher for all the um, dust, etc. when sanding? I also use it to lay my brushes in after I've been using the paste. And when it's dry, I can literally just flake that off into here and then it will be saving that and that will go in to make some more paste. So uh, it's a good money saving tip. Right, I'll be back with the finished pendant. So here we are, the finished pendant. Show you the back. And then the front again. And if we look at the bale, I've got a chain here. And I can just feed the chain through the bale. So totally wearable. Now, if you wanted to have a slightly different look, you could use liver of sulphur to darken either all of the pendant or just some of the, um, the design to, to pull the color out. But actually I've been looking at this and I'm thinking I might do something different and I might just gold plate the circle. So if I do, there'll be a picture of it at the end of the video. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy making this pendant. Um, please let me know what you think. Thank you. Bye.